Hello, all you delightful beans out there, and welcome back to the stream. I am Raw Zim, currently as Kalani the Farron, and this is DevTales as well as an Art Martin stream. Let's go ahead and get into this uh, work here. So, Tal, you've got a proposal for me, yes? Yes, I do. All right, lay it on me. All right, uh, I'll make sure to put you as editor on this. So, uh, what I did is I went ahead and uh, just for a bit of uh, reference for everyone involved, this is very much like uh, flavor focused. Uh, the numbers are going to have to be played with, the actual effects are going to have to be tested, but this is for the flavor and as general guidelines. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is in ScarDev, I'll post the link to it, so that way people can look at it if they want to, if they're able to see ScarDev. I don't know where uh, else I should Only tabletop. Put it, if not. I would say put it in Scar Feedback. All right, I'll put it there too, then. All right. So what I was thinking is I didn't have all the rules here because this was meant to be more of just a visual to explain it. Is that for each of our types, I have a proposed field effect, which would uh, basically encapsulate like, you know, things to do with the area, weather, just like an effect on the ground, like stuff of that nature. And the actual mechanics behind it is that uh, at minimum, uh, field effects could only be activated with a standard action, so you can't put it into a quick action slot. Uh, they require to either have the intensity raised or maintained in order for it to not drop down one intensity every single turn. So, for example, if you're at intensity 3 and you don't maintain it, next turn it will drop down to intensity 2 as the, as the round ends. And it goes back to the top of initiative order. Uh, other effects that the field would have is that um, if there is a field up, moves of that type will have minus one difficulty during accuracy stage. So it's like stab, but everyone gets it instead of just people of that type. And if you are of that type, then you'd get two levels of, of reduced difficulty on accuracy, not damage though, which increases your likelihood to crit, but it won't decrease your damage difficulty at all because we already have other things that might decrease your damage difficulty, so I didn't want to, you know, uh, throw more of that on there, if that makes sense. So, are there any yeah. questions on the actual I I idea or thought process behind the basics of field effects? Uh, nothing so far. All right. So other important things is that I'm thinking that these would be pretty expensive. They're meant to be like, you know, a sort of capstone for your character where it's like everything coming together, like everything to do with it coming, coming together. And so these are meant to be very big, very impactful and uh, generally very flavorful. Uh, however, they are also meant to be like, you know, very expensive and hard to get for a reason because instead of having like a set range for exactly how big the field effect can be, it's just going to be described as scene wide. Good to know. Uh, because then otherwise it'll, it'll start getting weird. Um, the, uh, the only uh, it, times where it wouldn't is if it's some something to do with, uh, like, if you want to restrict the range from being scene-wide, that's okay. But, like, by base, it's just scene-wide range. That is just how it's meant to work. So, what I did here is, for each of our types, uh, I came up with, like, a little bit of a name. Uh, the name is obviously just Complete Flavor. Uh, I came up with Intensity 1, Intensity 2, and Intensity 3 effects, uh, as well as just like a little fun description. And what happens is, is that if it's in Intensity 1, that's what it is. And if it's like, let's say we go to t uh, Intensity 2, 
and it doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have, like, something in intensity one. It's just assumed to be included if it's not uh, replacing it. So, like, for example, if it increases the difficulty to resist against it, that's considered a replacement. But if it does something else entirely, it does all of the lower intensity effects. Uh, however, okay. because this is something that you, you, because this is a move, and you can only use it once a turn, and you can't put Fury on it because that wouldn't make no damn sense, uh, you can only increase the intensity once a round. There is no way to increase it by more than one intensity per round. So in order to get to intensity three, you need to spend at least three turns of combat, which for how long we want combat to last is like half of combat. So this is something that you put up as like, this is a big investment. So I want it to be powerful, impactful, because this is something that should be like, you know, if you manage to get to intensity three, it's about to get bad for your opponents, but that's because you've also spent an entire action every single turn increasing intensity three turns in a row or maintaining it. So due to the fact that it has a constant cost associated with it, I think it's okay to have it work like that. Uh, what do you think about just like the thought process and idea behind it? I mean, so far it's making sense. All right. So now uh, let's go through like at least a couple of the ideas I had. Uh, I tried to make them all unique enough, uh, and I generally focused either on having them apply some sort of condition or conditions, uh, or have some otherwise flavorful effect instead of just straight up applying damage. Although sometimes the flavor is, is damage. So, for example, for Astral, uh, I came up with one where... Uh, if you're an ally, it grants three preventative temporary HP. And if it already has at least three preventative temporary HP, grants plus one to a random stat change excluding crit. However, if it's a foe, it does the opposite thing. So if you're an enemy of the user, going through it will subtract three temporary HP. And if you have none, it reduces a random stat by one, excluding crit. And then that just scales linearly, uh, where by the time it gets to intensity three, it's nine preventative temporary HP, and then plus three to a random stat change if you already have one. Uh, this would be more of like a uh, buff debuff focused one, where it doesn't technically speaking deal damage per se. However, it will strip away temporary HP from opponents, which is like, you know, a light form of causing damage. And if you don't let yeah. it cause damage by having no temporary HP, instead it's going to, like, nuke your stats. So, it seems impactful, but it seems purposely flavorful. Uh, and then, uh, there's another one where this is, uh, this one is just a lot more damage focused, which is fire which I went with, like, you know, like a more spreading flames thing. Difficulty 7 resist, otherwise it applies burn 1. Every single turn. It, it becomes your turn. You're rolling to resist if you're in the field. Uh, intensity 2 becomes difficulty 8 resist, and it will now apply burn... I accidentally put burn twice. Uh, it will now apply burn damage... Oh, no, wait. I just forgot to put a period, so it looks like I put I, I put it twice. Okay. Difficulty A resist, apply burn. Burn damage now ticks twice per turn. Which is nasty to deal with. And then intensity three, what it'll do is it'll apply burn intensity three. It doesn't have as much flavor, but it is very flavorable for fire in order to just straight up like make a consuming flame. But you have to be careful with this because you're not able to designate friend or foe. That is fair. Yeah. Uh, 
another cool one that is damage focused but is uh, very thematic is electric which is a static field everyone inside the field at intensity one gains one charge stack up to plus four charges Targeting someone with an electric type move will detonate their stacks, dealing damage with automatic successes equal to charge stacks on them. And this is if they don't do something narratively in order to discharge, like, you know, balance their charge. So, like, for example, if, like, you know, you come up with some narrative effect where, like, oh, hey, you have a bunch of charge going through you, you, you pull out, like, you take your sword and stab it into the ground or, like, you know like, put a conductive ground effect so you cleanse your charge stacks. Like, you know, you have to do something more narratively to get rid of it. And it will continually stack up until you're getting three charge stacks a turn. However, this, again, includes basically everyone, so this is something that you have to be clear about, because if you're using this and you don't have a way to clear up your charges, and someone uses an electric move on you, you're going to get nuked yourself as well. But it's very big, very impactful, and it encourages flavor. Um, another one that I particularly like is... Uh, where is it? Um, Shadow is one that I think is uh, particularly flavorful, along with Light. Shadow and Light seem particularly flavorful for me, although I'm probably going to say that about all these because I put a lot of effort into trying to make them flavorful. So, with light, uh, let's go over that. Anyone that is targeted with an offensive light move is judged. At the start of their turn, make a number of checks equal to judgment stacks against difficulty 7 or gain a stack of disabled. Intensity 2 takes an entirely different turn. Anyone that does not perform a light move must make an, a difficulty 8 blind resist. And then intensity 3 is anyone that uses a light move during their turn gains a single stack of protected. Note, this does not say per move. It just says if you have used a light move during your turn, you gain a stack of protected. So this means okay. that if you're doing like, you know, like some sort of paladin thematic, every single time you hit an enemy with a light move, you're judging them, which is going to disable their moves. If they don't perform a light move, they are blinded by the light, literally. And anyone that makes a light move gains a stack of protected. So if you're a paladin that's like all about using light moves over and over and over again, what this will do is it basically turns you into like an absolute menace to deal with because let's say you're fighting something that doesn't have any light moves, you're going to be judging them every single turn. They aren't going to performing light moves, so they have to make blind resists. And you also are gaining stacks of protected. However, if you're fighting against like, you know, someone else that is light typed and is using a bunch of that, it's going to turn into like a very... It's going to turn into a very messy battle very soon. Oh, uh, yeah, Era, it's in um, Scar Feedback, as well as Scar Dive. Uh, metal. Uh, the, the theme behind Metal is stat-changing moves, at least for this one. Uh, when you use a stat-changing move for Effect 1, you Intensity 1, you can affect yourself and an additional ally with a single action. Uh, intensity 2 is all stat changing moves may now be used as one action stage lower than usual to a minimum of quick. And then intensity 3 is all positive stat changers have an extra plus one to their final total, and negatives have a minus one. Yeah, Shadow Wolf, if you used like iron defense, it would become a quick action that could affect yourself and an ally and grants plus one more. However, if you're using a move like Screech, uh, it would be something, like, it would, again, be a quick action and would apply an extra minus one to the enemy. So, people are going to plus and minus their stat changers very quickly if this effect is up. Uh, Mythic was one where it's, like, negative stat change moves no longer reduce stats below zero unless a DC is met. Uh, difficulty eight resist, apply taunt on foes. So, like, if you're... You, the person using this is applying taunt on themselves, like, as a target of, like, all the foes. So all the foes on the field have to start targeting the mythic type. And enemies that move away from the user must make a difficulty 9 resist check or gain fear. So it's basically saying, like, you know, come and fucking get me. You're fighting me or you're running. 
and there's there is no chance there is no choice between the two you are either fighting me and you're going to continue to fight me or you're running and you're going to continue to run uh but this does specifically target foes on the uh taunt and the fear but the negative stat changes are for everyone because, you know, if it's a legendary confrontation, everyone should be at their strongest. Uh, nature, a uh, lot of very small uh, fucking text on that. Sorry about that. It's just I was trying to make it work. But it says at the end of your turn, you may designate targets for nourishment. At the beginning of a nourishment target's turn, they may take restorative healing from the nourishment pool. Nourishment pool is equal to the user's soul plus expertise plus survival and refreshes on the user's turn. Basically, you can designate all of your team as nourishment targets, and every single turn, uh, at the beginning of their turn, they may take restorative healing from a refreshing pool that refreshes on the, the nature type's turn. Uh, intensity 2 is at the end of your turn, you may designate targets for uh, deprivation. Difficulty 8, desiccation resist. All damage from desiccation, regardless of cause, is added to the nourishment pool. And then the final thing is all contributors to the nourishment pool are doubled. So let's say you're fighting, like, you know, a horde of enemies. Now this is going to be, like, very effective because you can designate all those enemies as desiccate targets and you can just sap them empty. The nourishment pool gets completely filled and, like, you're just handing out restorative healing left and right. However, against a single enemy, it's not as effective, but you're still contributing it to yourself and you're keeping your allies up. Uh, one thing that is like the opposite of this is Necrotic, which is Soul Snare. Uh, it splits restorative healing between the original target and the user of this field effect unless a DC is made when using, this mo uh, using the move. Uh, intensity 2 is it steals restorative healing from the original target and gives it to the user of this field effect unless a DC is made. So it no longer lets you half and half, it just takes all of it. And then number 3 is at the end of the round, all restorative healing that is stolen by this effect can be converted into preventative healing. So that way their restorative healing pool is empty again. It's, it's like a soul snare effect that is siphoning out any, any like, you know, energy heading to their souls. Because, you know, the, uh, the idea behind the um, restorative healing is that it's more of like an adrenaline shot instead of true healing. So it's sapping away your, like, adrenaline and your, like, ability to keep going. But it doesn't do anything to things like true healing or preventative. It's just restorative. Okay, sounds good. Yep. Uh, poison is just like, congratulations, you're going to get blighted. Uh, difficulty 8, blight resist, save DC plus 1. So whatever your save DC is normally, just plus 1 it. Uh, intensity 2, afflicting blight has plus 1 successes. Difficulty 9, resist, save DC plus 2. Uh, and the purpose of Afflicting Bite has plus one successes is because, remember, the amount of successes on an Affliction check determines the amount of damage dice that are rolled. And then stage three is Afflicting Blight has plus three successes, save DC plus five. A wise decision. Trash Mammal, thank you very much for that follow. Welcome. Uh, so this is flavored as, like, you know, the potency is, like, building as the intensity increases, and it makes it more virulent, and uh, makes it a lot harder to, like, cleanse yourself of it. Okay. Uh, psionic is a telekinetic boundary. Unauthorized individuals attempting to enter the boundary must succeed a difficulty 7 save or be repulsed. Uh... Tier 2 is unauthorized individuals attempting to leave the boundary must make a save. Difficulty 8 for enter or exit. And difficult and intensity 3 is unauthorized physical items, including attacks, cannot cross the boundary without succeeding the save. Difficulty 9. So if you get up to tier 3, you can even look at like an arrow coming in and go unauthorized. No.
And this would be one where, like, you would basically be able to designate the boundary radius instead of it just being scene wide. So, like, you know, if you wanted to, you could, like, put it around a room as, like, a part of the boundary. And so if someone tries to leave the room you're in, no. Uh, Shadow, this one I'm particularly proud of. Um, so this one does actually have part of the mechanics in the, uh, in the description. And the description is, A deal is struck, the pack now demands a price to be paid or suffer consequences. Every two temporary HP or one current HP paid, free action, reduces the resist difficulty by one for the turn. Uh, this is not included in any other prices you pay as a part of this. And it only uh, lowers the resist difficulty for yourself. The first stage is only difficulty seven seal resist. It will attempt to put difficulty seven seal on you. Number two, those inside may spend five current HP or 10 temporary HP to gain a second quick action, difficulty eight seal. Part three is may spend 10 CHP or 20 temporary HP to gain an additional quick action, price of intensity two not included, difficulty nine seal. Now what this does is um, it makes it so that way, if you have a way to pay the price, you'll get extra quick actions. This does not give you any extra standard actions, so it would only help you, like, with uh, things that if you have, like, a bunch of, like, quick actions. So it could let you stat change a lot. It could let you maintain it for free. And one thing is that anyone in the field may pay the price of the pack to maintain it. Because this affects everyone. Everyone can pay the price to gain secondary quick action. So, so long as someone is willing to pay the price, it continues. However, one thing you got to be careful of is that it applies sealed. And if you remember, stage two sealed, which if you fail the first one and the second one, will in fact raise uh, the action cost of all your things. So quick actions become normal actions. Which means that if you have difficulty to seal on you, you cannot use the benefits of the pack. The pack has its price, and it is exacting its toll. But you could always pay some life to, to reduce the resist difficulty to try and, uh, you know, not have that happen. Okay. Basically, this is just an effect that lets you play with your life total. Uh, so long as you have a way to, like, you know, re, like, refill your life. And what it'll do is, um, if others cannot pay the packed price, then it's going to eventually get sealed three on everyone, and then all moves will be disabled. Uh, I, I happen to really like the, uh, the flavor of this one. Uh, Sonic is also interesting. Sound amplification. Individuals may talk, and intended recipients may hear it regardless of distance. Uh, number two is all targets hit with a Sonic attack must make difficulty eight resist check or gain a stack of stunned. Uh, and then intensity three is Sonic attacks may target regardless of range on your turn. So the reason why it says on your turn is to stop any sort of uh, opportunity attacks with infinite range sonic attacks. But basically this means that like, you know, if you're if you have sonic attacks and you have this up, you can attack from German any distance, any amount of targets. Phone. Uh any amount of targets and possibly stunning all of those targets. And it also has the flavor of letting you far talk. Definitely an interesting setup. Yep. Uh, water. Uh, designate an origin point at the end of your turn. May attempt to repel any number of targets from origin point. Uh, this is a little bit deprecated, sorry. Alternatively, may start a whirlpool. Whatever, I'll, I'll just explain what it does. Um, so you can either choose to repel the number of targets for the origin point or start a whirlpool uh and what whirlpool does uh i'll just explain it on i'll just explain both Th this one was another one where it was getting massive so i tried concatenating it you can choose to either start um like a flood or a whirlpool if it's a flood it 
it checks for repel. For whirlpool, it checks for draw. Uh, if you swap between them, their stacks of draw and slash repulse swap with it. <laughs> and reaching the center of the whirlpool applies restrained and begins suffocation. Being unable to move away from the flood applies restrained and increases damage to 6.d10 plus 3. Basically, it lets you play with their positioning, and then eventually, if they're unable to resist it, and either get pulled to the center, or pushed into something like a tree or a wall or a rock or whatever solid thing they can't push against the water force of, it'll start dealing damage. Uh, wind is afflicts blind, difficulty 8 resist, minus 4 resist difficulty of some way to protect eyes or does not use eyesight. May accept brutal 1 instead of blind. Basically like keeping your eyes open and not like squinted. But you're going to take some damage and now you have brutal 1 against you. Uh, okay. number 2 is afflict blind, difficulty 9 resist, minus 3 difficulty if some way to protect or doesn't use eyesight, may accept brutal 2. And then it, it changes to difficulty 10 resist, minus 2 difficulty, may accept brutal 3. So I didn't go over all of them, but I went with like, you know, over a lot of them enough to get like the point across. Yeah, uh, I definitely What do you think what. about What do you think about it? I mean, they're all definitely fun effects. Um, obviously, they're not intended to be balanced, so that makes things a little difficult for implementation. Uh, I definitely think we will have field effects that are, you know, we'll just have a generic field effect that increases accuracy on, or it makes accuracy easier on the associated type and probably just that but uh, otherwise well, I, I thought that that's... that was going to be like just attached to intensity one like of any field effect well yes but for balance sake um we can have just basic field effects oh okay so like a basic field effect before it has like any of the creative shit thrown in for the characters correct all right so what are you thinking that intensity two would cause for a generic here? I'll No 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 just... no no. I mean like for these effects they can purchase for they'll they'll be more expensive on XP cost. Yeah. We don't need a generic uh thing for intensity two or three. Okay. So, but I'm just going to put it on here anyways for intensity one. It is three. Let's put basic. Uh, same type. Accuracy stage. Uh, do we want... Anything else to be on intensity one besides uh, reduced difficulty of same type moves during accuracy stage? What was that? Uh, reduces difficulty of same type, same type moves during accuracy stage. That sounds good. All right, so that'll be like you know the starter field effect where like you attach it to a type, and that's. Just what it does, it doesn't have intensity 2, uh, like as an unlock, it doesn't have intensity 3, and all it does is reduces difficulty of same type moves, and then as they play, or like working with their storyteller, they'll modify it and adapt intensity 1 through 3 in order to, you know, um, like figure out like what it does, and then like you can unlock intensity 2 and then eventually intensity 3 as separate unlocks. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, basically. All right. Uh, sounds good to me. So. Uh, cool. 
So I guess prospectively, how much do you think even getting intensity one generic field effect should be? I have no idea. Especially because, like, these are not balanced for each other. They are not. Which makes it very difficult to even consider putting a price on. Yeah. But that's because these were going to be so you always going to be so unique and ridiculous that it's hard to come up with a generic cost for it. So I think it's probably best to just say, have the storyteller decide how much this costs for your character for whatever effects you're thinking of. I agree. So I think. Hmm. What we could do is put costs with each of these, and I'll let you figure out what you think on that. Um, to give, since this is mostly meant to be an example, and yeah. like for example, intensity one Earth, gonna be really cheap yeah. compared to the astral one or the fire one or. <laughs> literally yeah. any of the others well, so, yeah or like you know intensity one on on shadow is going to be like okay cool it's a difficulty seven seal resist check yeah like you know um but yeah, how do you feel about just saying what is so What do you say about just saying that like even getting like intensity an intensity one field effect is like what like 50 or 60 XP? Cuz that's like expensive but also, like, that's just, like, you know, it's going to be an entire scene-wide effect that I, basically gives you double stab. For the uh, most of them, I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Earth... Well, because that'll be for, like, yeah. Earth, I would say, would be cheaper. Shadow would be cheaper than the 50, but most of these would, uh... That 50 sounds good. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll just make it, like... A 50. Yeah, and also one of the reasons that, like, you know, it does it is because, like, um, those ones in particular start out, like, not very impactful, and then by the end, it's like, oh my fucking god, dealing with it. Like, Intensity 3 of Earth, all non-burrow movement is considered to have difficult terrain. Non-burrow movement types cannot sprint. Non-burrow movement applies restrain difficulty 7 resist. Like, trying to deal with that is going to be hellacious. But, like, number yeah. one does... It's like, okay, yeah, whatever. I think unlocking them at, you know, increasing intensities will probably be their own costs. Yeah. Because and after suppose... that, it's not intended. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I, I suppose for the uh, non-special effects... Um... Like, when I'm saying basic, I'm not necessarily meaning, like, the basic type. I'm meaning, like, this is just what you can do. Like, what they all come with. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, I'm just saying it'll start because, like, you know, how the same thing that we do with moves is that they start as a basic type and you can then, like, apply a typing to it. Technically speaking. Yeah. Uh, I am thinking... For intensity two, it could be uh, reduces difficulty of damage for same type moves. Uh, maybe, but I'm a little bit leery of doing that just because it'll start putting things down to difficulty four damage if they're if something's double weak to it. Okay, add an extra die. Yeah, but then that just gets very. Hmm. Could just say plus one success. Just an automatic success. On accuracy or damage? 
Uh, for intensity two, I would say damage. And then for intensity three, it's a plus one success on accuracy as well as uh, damage. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking for intensity three, it'll be a total of plus two success on damage. Yeah, I'll just... Uh, no, I do I don't think that's Argus. Alright, so... Hmm. It is a Tyrant, but it's not Argus. Okay, so... Uh, but this looks at least good for, like, you know the ideas and thought process behind it as, like, you know, a system. Yeah, I'm liking this. Alright. So, now that we have this, that is the last thing we needed before we started discussing move costs. Oh, boy. Yep. This time. Yep. Uh, and I'm doing something that will also help us out a little bit. I section this. I can dance on the head of a pin as well. Hey, you have been given an AMP and V pack through stream loots by Candyfloss underscore mango. Good luck. Uh, Candy, who are you wanting that to be sent to? Because unfortunately, it seems the. Uh, putting, you know, text into these isn't working. You wanted to go to Nano? All right. All right, Nano, your pack has been sent. All right. So I have something uh, good that I did for us. Uh, let me go ahead and... Set this into... Same thing. This is something that I went ahead and... Drew, just so that way we could... Line by line, look at shit, figure out what we want, what we don't want, if we're keeping it, if we're not. So, uh, look in Scar feedback and then. Okay. We can work with this. So, so what this is, is every single section, like, just with, like, a one little thing, and it's going to go across to, like, you know, the proposed, and then we'll move it over to final, and we'll include, like, any notes that are needed.
So up here, I'm gonna maybe that much. Uh, Era, you would be very welcome on voice, by the way. Yep. The XP cap and damage. It's this is this is just so that we can remember. So th these are our current caps and how they work. I believe that this is good to remember. Yeah. Uh, did we want to do the thing where full actions double these? Um, so I think we agreed on that, but also, you know, because it takes up both your actions and your quick action. I would say so. All right. Oh, whoops. Uh, do we also want this to do the same thing to damage cap? Yes. I just wanted to put in... So it'll cost 10 XP for it to be able to be a quick or full action. Yep. I think to make it better and more viable for people for doing like quick or full um uh, a wise choice for leader one sec <laughs> <laughs> nano 8 bit shadox has purchased 10 avatars and martin's packs <laughs> nano thank you so much for that purchase hey there just thought you should know that Nano 8 Bit Shadox thinks you're cute. Uh, right now the text boxes are not working, guys, so do remember that, please. So, one thing that I, one idea that I like is that if you do purchase the 10 XP cost thing for yep. the action cost change, you can choose whether to use it as a quick, normal, or full. And that way, you know, if you want to have, say, we'll, we'll just use Flamethrower. Um, you've got, you know, you can basically just put all your XP into it and have three different versions of flamethrower you know you've got your quick action version the normal and then the full action that way they don't have to be you know be spending xp for you know three different versions of the move it's all just it's all been spent on you know the one um so to make this quicker for the example um, we're just going to go with the base 30. So they could have their quick action version of the flamethrower do three power. The normal action version do uh, six power. And then the full action version would do uh, 12 power. Hmm.
but that also means that, you know, they had to spend the XP to allow that uh, change so they can change it between those. Uh, right now we are planning to do one. Yes, Wolf Mage. And then, so... How are we going to... Like... I can dance on the head of a pin as well. Mm. Hey, you have been given an AMP in V pack through stream loops by Nano 8 Bit Shade Ox. Good luck. So, how are we going to make it so that way it will work good with this formula, this idea, if it's like a status move or a, um, or a stat change move? I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, cause it's like pretty simple to figure out like, you know, what the different stages would be for like, um, like damage moves. But what about for things that aren't damage? Like, are we still just going to have it work the same way, even if it's a little bit finicky? Well, the way it would work is this allow, like, okay, so... It affects the XP cap. That's the main yep. thing that the changing of actions impacts. So you could have, like, okay, we'll just go with Tail Whip. Um, right. You know, you've got your quick action version that just lowers their uh, integrity. Then you've got the full action, uh, the, the normal action version uh that you know they uh could have it do the you know it'll still do the minus to integrity but it also has like two power and then you got the full uh the full version where they could have it do minus two to integrity as well as do two power for damage okay um, so do we just want to tell them to use, like, you know, three different slots on their sheet if they do this for, like, the quick, normal, and full? Yes. But the XP, it's basically all of the XP goes on to one move. So, yeah. you know, you're not spending 15 XP on the quick action version, 30 on the normal, and then 60 on the full. Instead, you just spend, it would be... At, at the end, you could spend up to 70 XP, and thus you have three different versions of the move. Yeah, I, I like that. That's fine. By the way, I'm just going to put it in feedback. Uh, this is how I ended up making the... Uh, uh, just real quick. I put... I made something really quickly for the Scar character sheet, like, on the back. I made a slot for field. It's just, like, at the end where I just merged, like, two of them together. What do you feel about this being the, uh... Uh, I feel like the extra effects, personally, is just... is good enough for that. Well, because you have to keep track of three different intensities. Fair. So I mean, if they want to use like, that, sure. Yeah. Do we just want to concatenate, like, take out extra effects instead, just have it be the intensities, or? Well, I now use that... extra effects. No. Well, no, no, no. This is for the one. It's literally one slot Dude. for a field move on the back. On the, in the, in the, in the move slots extension. Okay, so just. Just, just to be clear, like, you know, here's, like, it's literally just, like, look at that grumbly Martin. At, 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 the, at the end, it just got moved into, like, it, it ate the box below it. In order to basically have, like, area fill out for it. I can't really hear you right now. I have Martin video. For the grumbly Martin. Look at that little right. cutie. They were very grumbly up until yeah. they got the pets. Then they were happy. Okay, where were we? Um, 
So just real quick, uh, what I did on like the back of the character sheet here, I'll just. Well, yeah, that's fine. I, I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't just to, matter. Just to be clear, much this to didn't me. happen to like all of the slots. It's literally one, two slots got merged into one slot on the back of the entire like move slots thing. So. Also, hope you don't mind me sliding in. Yeah. No, we already said you were good to slide in. Yeah. But we said you were welcome. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, for this, uh, um, we're fine with the EXP cap thing, though, right? Yes. I, at least I'm good with that. Um, and, Era, did you hear my uh, proposal about the action cost change XP cost thing? No, I, I had to walk away again. That's kind of why I hopped in, because I keep on getting tugged away by distractions. Okay. Yeah. So what I was proposing is if you spend that XP cost for the action cost change on a move, you can basically make up to three versions of the move. You've got quick, normal, and then full. And all of the the XP that you spend goes it goes to all of the different versions. So instead of having to say you want to make tail whip, um, you got three different versions of it depending on how much time you're putting into it. If you're a quick action you got up to 15 XP by by base. Um, mm -hmm. Normal action would be up to 30 XP, and then full action would be 60 XP. Um, however, with this, you spend 70... Uh, you, you can spend up to 70 XP, and then that is able to be... Basically, you buy the... You design the full action version and then you make uh, you don't have to spend 15 30 and then 60 it's 70 xp and you get to design three different versions based on how much time you're gonna put into it there's more see. flexibility so, i would love to see that in action it sounds good on paper i want to see yeah. what people do with it so yeah. basically, you spend 10, 10 XP to make it a, a, a try move, a quick standard or full. Basically. Yes. Yeah, depending on how much time you want to put into it. Now, the reason that I this one do like it, though. Yeah. Now, the reason that it would exist as like, you know, having a little bit of an extra cost is because you're paying 10 XP outside of the move XP cap for the flexibility, because there will be plenty of moves where you're just like, I don't need this to be three different moves. I'm fine if this just sits at normal because I'm not going to be flexing it around. No, I like it. I yeah. There, there, there's about three or four moves I wanted to throw quick at, but I hesitated. But now I'm want to. I'm probably gonna do that like as soon yeah. as I can. I, I think it gives more flexibility, and it also makes a lot of sense. Like if you're yeah. making, if you're using like flamethrower, you, you know, you've got one where you're doing a quick action with it. And then you've got another, instead of buying the whole move again, just to have a norm, uh, a standard action version, you know, you're able to design up to a full action. And, you know, if you're, if you're flamethrowering for a full six seconds, it's going to have a different impact than, you know, one second of flame. <laughs> uh, nope, I like it. Wolf Mage, that depends on the variety of book. Yeah. So, like, for example, like, I had, uh, before I, before I joined, like, I literally had Charles, like, get a book on counterfeiting currency. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, let me make sure that, uh, uh, I set you as editor on this too, Era. I forgot to do that. I am sorry. No, you're fine. I wasn't sure whether I was not going to join voice today, but my social battery decided to actually recharge, so... Yep. Alright. Um, so, moving down one... Uh, for power... Uh, I think base increase power 5 XP for each. That is, like, our gold standard. I'm... So, 
So, I do and don't like the 5 XP per... Um, All right. Because, like, it gives... On the one hand, 5 XP per... You, you know, doing things in increments of 5. It makes it easier to calculate. But on the flip side, it also limits some of our capability with adjusting XP costs for different effects. Like some of the conditions, for example, uh, we gotta, we're kind of forced to put them into the same category as each other, whereas if we had the ability to assign different, you know, if we could assign, say, four or six or seven, we could split them out more based on balance. Yeah. I get what you're saying. I just also really don't like people being left at, like, let's say, XP. Uh, you're at, like, 56 out of 60 but you don't have any 4 XP things that you want to put into it, so you're just stuck with a move that's not, like, at cap, and if you then proceed to pur purchase something to put it into cap, it, it might not be something that you want to have on the move later on down the line, and there's not really a good way to, like, you know, remove something from a move right now, so it's... Uh, I, I just personally really hate, like, games doing that. That is a fair point. Like, there, there's arguments on both sides there, definitely. I um, am oh, I would leave it at five per. It's simple, and I think that's. I worry about if we make it too complicated, it'll just be end up being confusing. Fair. It all it honestly already is anyway. So yeah, we can keep it at the five, the increments of five. All right. Uh, next up, set damage per damage. It is twice as expensive as uh as purchasing power. Uh, and it gives um like, you know, slightly more EV. However, it is a lot, it's worth a lot less when, uh, like per XP if you're doing something effective and it's worth a lot more when you're fighting something that you're not effective against. So how do we feel about set damage being, uh, here, actually, here's a better word of, here, uh, I'm gonna put a better name for it. Uh, guaranteed damage per damage. But it's not set. It doesn't mean you only deal that amount. It just means it's that much of guaranteed damage on your roll. It's your plus one. Yeah, it's it's a plus one. This is one of those examples. It's guaranteed of, damage. This is one of those examples of where I... We, wish we weren't doing it uh, in increments of 5 because 10 doesn't feel enough, 15 feels too much. If it were more flexible, I'd say make it like 12. But going with increments of 5, I would say 10 is good. Yeah, I agree with Zim on this one. Hmm. Honestly, this on this particular one, I would recommend a scale. Instead of just right. being 10 per, I would say 10 times the amount or or the dot amount or what have you, if that makes sense. <clears throat> because right. guaranteed so, damage is your plus ones and whatnot. Mathematically, in terms of XP, it's worth 11.25. On a standard difficulty, if it's... Uh, even just a little bit um if it's even like you know one stage of effective it's worth it's only worth nine xp
Hmm. So it literally splits between 11 and 9 for standard and uh, plus 1 effectiveness. Random side note for you, Zim, and for Whiskers, since I think he's listening. His art is so good that I put drop my background assets in, and they didn't look good, so I have to modify the snot out of them to match the, the level of... <laughs> and if you want him success. to redo do that, we can do that. It's fine. I've got plenty of assets I've created myself. I just gotta do some funky things in Photoshop to make a match. Um, but back to this, All right. that kind of adds more credence towards my point of it feels too cheap, but 15 feels too much. Yeah. yeah. So I definitely get what you're saying there. Uh, I, I'm still just not sold on the whole, like, you know, like non-incremental thing but honestly like if we're going to break it now is the time where we have to move away from it because originally yeah. we had that and then it got way too complicated and then we moved away from it for simplicity in order to like you know make bookkeeping a lot better and I... so are we going to move back to it i think what we will do is break it but try to keep to the increments of five. Can we possibly do a three five standard and and do a split standard instead? What do you mean? So it uh, either goes up by an increment five. of five or three. So in this case, instead of being ten, it'd be thirteen. Twelve. Three times four is twelve. Could do it that way as well. Oh, that's what I thought you were saying. No, I was kind of breaking it down into two parts. Five, five, three. But oh, okay. that would also work. Four times three is 12. So we could focus on multiples of five and three specifically as well. That is another way of doing it. I would say if we're focusing on multiples, we go with one or the other. Well, I mean, there's plenty of systems that split between five and three. Okay, well then, let's go with three and five. Okay. <coughs> yeah, because... Um, uh, for example, I know in Star Wars RPG, it focuses on fives. Uh, I know in... But I know that also in, like, uh, Hunter and World of Darkness, things like that, it goes um, fives and threes, generally. Pathfinder or like you know picking up a specialty yeah uh and in like you know picking up a new skill dot is five but picking up a specialty is three okay then yeah let's uh, go yeah, with so three there, there's and like fives. plenty that use fives and threes threes and fives okay so, so some, case... we have to make it some combination of three and five yes yes so, for so we want guaranteed damage, damage to be 11 or 12? 12. 12. It would be 12 with 3s and 5s. Because right. there's a... Uh, like with Damage the guaranteed, over time... Oh, yeah. With the guaranteed damage, it's, you know... Uh, like, you say it's worth 11.25 for standard... But it's got a lot of uh, use for again when you're using it against something that is, you know, super it that you are uh, not very effective against. So its value goes up in that case. So that's why I say twelve. Yeah. So like. 
compared to normal damage, if it's double resist, it's technically worth like about 22.5 XP worth of normal power. Yeah. Of like I'm, XP. XP. I'm worth. good with 12. Uh, damage over time. Uh, so it's cleansable. That's something to put, remember, because we made it cleansable now. Yeah. With it being cleansable, I would say that would make sense for 10. I'd yeah, put it so it's cleansable, but it goes past integrity. You say 12? Yeah, my argument, even though it's a cleansable thing, it's still something that can stick around for a while if nobody has a cleansing move. So well, it's, I see it as slightly uh, there's, uh, uh, Everyone has cleanse maneuver. Oh. Yeah. I missed that part. Everyone has fine. the cleanse maneuver. 10 is fine, then. That's your stop, drop, and roll, then. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's how you resist negative stat changes. It's how you resist conditions. It's how you resist damage over time. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, the only thing is that if you cleanse, then you can't do anything like brace, dodge, parry, because it counts as your defensive maneuver for the turn. Got it. All right. Has anyone ever seen anyone using building damage with consecutive use? I have moves that use it. Okay. I haven't used them yet. I haven't seen people ridiculous. use them, so I had to. Yeah. Um, I have them on Verdant on one move that also combos it with Bind. And I okay. have it set where it's only effective with Bind. So if he has them, somebody bound, it will start to kick off. Yeah, if they're restrained, yeah. Uh, that's fair. So building damage with consecutive use, every time you have that, like, um, it'll gain. Go ahead. <clears throat> Let's back up a little bit real quick uh, and utilize that notes uh, column. Oh, yeah. Because guaranteed damage. Um, yeah. Obviously, that will be reduced by integrity. Uh, but do they get to roll their stats in addition to it? Uh, I say yes, because you could have a move that has some power on it and some guaranteed damage. It's just adding plus one automatic success to your roll. Okay, let's make note of that. And also, we decided a while ago that uh, guaranteed damage moves have, uh, because this is how they work, they do use Here. their skills as damage rolls. It's just treated like if they have guaranteed damage, but no power on it, it's just treated as a power zero move but it is a damaging move, so. Still uses the skill. All right, uh, all right, let's just uh, make sure we note that then. So I'll let you go and put in the notes there. Yep. Can still, uh, no. Damage roll. That's not. Uh, do we need to put any notes for increased power? Uh, this damage does not bypass integrity. This adds success to your damage roll. Still uses skills for damage roll. That looks good. Uh, what was your question? Do we still need one for increased power? Do we want a note for that? I don't think so. I think that's I think. explanatory. All right. So how much do we think building damage with consecutive uses? And do we want to put a limit on how much it can build? Considering how most of the time combat doesn't last that long, as far as how many rounds you actually have, I would definitely say no to a cap. Um... All right. I'm just debating on that XP cost because 
25 feels too big. Too high. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So for 25, let's just think over what it does. So technically speaking, this adds no damage on the initial thing. However, every time you use it, it gains damage equal or uh, I, I think it should be building power, by the way, instead of building damage. It's building power. Right. We don't want it to be giving guaranteed damage every time you use it every single time. We want it to increase Agreed. the power, the amount of dice you roll. So it should be building power with consecutive use. So let's say you have two stacks of this. You spent 50 XP. 50 XP is worth 10 damage. The amount of times you'd have to use this in order to reach the 50 damage, uh, the, the 50 XP worth of damage is, uh, you, it would be two plus, uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. So you need to use it for 10 rounds to be at the same power XP efficiency of just increasing power. However, after that, what'll happen is then you're at 12, you're like gaining a lot of exp efficiency but it, like it'll have because it's five times as expensive you have to use it for five turns in order for it to reach um exp equivalency but after that it basically like imagine it starts at a lower point on the graph but it grows faster in terms of efficiency a real yeah. important question mechanically speaking is how many rounds do we expect any given combat to last six to eight six to eight I would say you have to even out at three to four moves then. I say four, moves. so it's 20. I say four, so it's 20. So that way, because like that's the turn where it will be equal on turn four. Hmm. So that way it's on turn four, halfway through the expected max combat length. This is one, uh, another one of those where I like somewhere between the three and four, which I is why we can build. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I think we should do it 18. 18 feels comfortable to me. Yes. That way it's, you know, not exactly four, not exactly three, but y you start really seeing that return on four. Im right. important uh, mechanical question. Does it matter yep. if it hits? No. Okay. No. But, uh, like, you know, you have, like, let's just say for balance reasons, like, you have to have it so that way, like, you are actively building it up in combat or, like, some other situation. You can't stand outside of, like, you know, a battle for, like, five minutes just using it against like whatever fucking tree happens to be there as a valid target take one step forward and use it to nuke a boss yeah no it'll only be valid for that scene yeah and so you might we'll... want to include that in the notes inactive scene yeah yeah and considering you know a new scene starts anytime combat starts builds damage only in active scene Yes, but it also has the narrative funniness of somebody destroying a tree slowly out of anger. Yep, which is narratively funny, but uh, I don't think that that funniness is worth them being able to nuke bosses. No, that's why I would, that's why I had that question. Yep. Okay, Oko, uh, I say Nuclear stat. Um, real quick, uh, for the notes on building power, uh, I think we should also explain what these mean for the. Like, increased power is self-explanatory. But yeah. this, I would say, make notes that it's, you know, plus one power each time you use it, starting with the second time. Uh, what happens if they don't use it? Then in, it's in reset. That's what I thought. I, we will clarify, though, it's unless they have, unless they are unable to use it for reasons outside of their control. Because I don't want them to be necessarily penalized because they get disabled or something. Yeah. Or stunned. 
Well, stun only takes up one of your actions, but yeah, you need to get double stun. Yeah, if they get double yeah, stun. I, I know then... what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, every time the move is used, it gains power equal to the build power rating. Must be used every turn possible every turn possible to keep current our rating does not contribute to max power cap how do you feel about saying that does not contribute to max power cap I'm yes. going to expand this out a bit. That looks good. Honestly, I'd say shrink down the uh, effect for final and then well, also Well, this needs to be bigger well. anyways. Yeah. It's just that this just needs to be bigger anyways. Hey there, Jits. And yeah, I got some new talkie icons uh, from Mirai recently. Uh, they were honestly meant for use during the... Uh, while, while my main PC was out, but uh, now that it's back, obviously they don't have that much uh, as much use, but they're still fun. So I'm still using them. Because I can. Because this is my channel. Uh, we have expanded. All right. Uh, so are we fine with how uh, building power looks? Uh, give me one sec. Our thing. Yep. Oh, too many tabs. Let me close that one. I'm happy with it. It's got the bare minimum for what I would need it to be able to argue with players. <laughs> I love physics. I also love physics, my friend. By the way, everybody, commissions are open for Whiskers. He's only got one more piece outside of some talky icons, which won't take that much time. So if you would like to puppy. get a commission, a please puppy. let me know. All right, so uh, Oko, power I vote in. fucking snap that shit. I have never been a fan of Oko. The only well, we really had that because oh this was during the Pokemon thing. I like one hit KOs as an idea, but I like making it really hard, and then I root for the players to get it off. But with that XP cost, which it has to be really high, it's almost unachievable, and it has to be a DM granted thing, GM granted thing. Excuse me. SD. Yeah, let's SD. let's just. 
That 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 should not be like. I feel like this just shouldn't be a standard standard purchasable thing. I agree. I agree. So we wait, can no. mention it somewhere else. Yeah. So zero. Uh. The proposal is to. Proposed is just snap. Yep. Alt shift. Whoop. Alt shift five. Proposal is to get rid of it. This is how. If I do it like that. Okay, no, it doesn't draw a line between it. Uh, and if we're going to snap it, let's do thank that. Thank you. I was going to do that on you, but thank you. <laughs> Can we also put it here too? Uh, well, no, this is, we'll this keep is the current. current. Uh, yeah. it, the current should remain as unchanged as possible in order for like people to like look at what already existed and what's going to propose change. And then after we release this to the community to get like, you know, some initial feedback uh, in order to see if we like, you know, fuck something up. Okay. Then once we see if we fuck something up and it turns out we haven't, then we go over to final. And Nuclear if it doesn't detected. exist, we just don't put it there. Yeah, this I'm is... sorry. I'm used to corporate world where I have to make it very clear for the idiots. Yeah. So I have to do red across the entire lines. So that way they see visibly that it's gone. Yeah. Okay. So minus one accuracy. Um. Can we bump this to the three scale and do six? So is um, accuracy worth more or less than power? With chip damage being involved, I think technically more. You mean that power is worth more? No, no. because if you get any power, you can ship. You just need to hit. Uh, one thing that I want to point out is crits exist, which could uh, inflate the value of accuracy true because you don't need to buy as much power if you'll just have so much accuracy you'll hit and crit provided they don't brace i feel like accuracy should be uh switched to the threes and make it six i'm fine with that on the flip side here I'm personally a bit of a fan of the negatives not being worth as much as increase. Interesting. I see where I you're coming from with that. that. I see where you're coming from with that. Um, it, it just makes it, to me, it feels right to have it where like in this case we could do six for plus one accuracy and then minus five for minus one accuracy um it, it just feels better to have them be not worth as much to take that penalty and i'm trying to think of how to put it into other words but um, my brain is not wanting to work for explaining why I feel that way. Yeah. Um, um, I understand why, I think. At the same time, when you're sacrificing something in a move, I feel you should get something of equal or greater benefit. Well, right now I'm kind of fighting more between... Because I feel like it should be worth a little less to get a penalty. But at the same time, keeping it simple would make it where they are the same both sides. But I know most games, usually the when you've got a penalty to something, it is not worth as much as a buff. Hmm. 
By the way, I put something up in uh, up top next to EXP cap and damage cap uh, for penalty costs with how, like, you know, we've been having penalty costs work. Uh, I just want to clear this with you because I think this is something to clear because we're discussing the cost of a negative. Because this is my current understanding of how it works. Up top. I'm looking at that, and if I understand what you're writing there, you mean, like, say the XP cap is 30, you take, we'll just go with minus 5 for minus 1 accuracy. You take a minus 1 to accuracy, that means that you still can... So does that mean that your cap isn't... You get minus five on your current contribution towards your cap. So, like, let's say you have a move that has, let's say, four damage, four power on it, which is 20 XP. But you want this to be capable of being used as a quick thing. And so what you do is you go, oh, hey, I'll throw minus one accuracy on it as minus five to get it down to 15. The current XP cap is 15, but you still have to buy all the positives that you're putting into the move. So all positives added up cannot go over the current XP cap. Yes. However, the thing is, is that you can make it go over the XP cap with that. It's just that you won't get any discount on having to purchase it. Gotcha. So if you, if you buy 70 XP worth of positives and you offset it with 10 XP worth of negatives you still got to pay the 70 because you could always remove these negatives later. But um, you got to pay the 70 for all the positives. It's just you can use it on a 60 XP slot. That's a little confusing. Yeah, you're confusing okay, basically, me as well. <laughs> like, I understand what you're saying. It's just... I'm probably not saying it in the best way. No. It, it's just... Okay. So the idea behind it is make it so that way if they buy 50 XP worth of positives and they want to have a move, let's say let's say they're starting out and they are they don't they they have a max EXP cap of 30 on a move. Yeah. But they really want to have a move that does 50 XP worth of things. They have the 50 XP worth of things and then they put 20 XP worth of negatives on it. They still have to do the purchase price of 50 for the move, it's just that now they're able to use it at their current level. See, what it that is doing is the it's cap. In, yeah, it in, only increases the cap. And I thought the point of the negatives was to reduce the cost of the move itself. Ergo, somebody has a 30 power move, but doesn't have 30 experience, so they decide that this move also gives them a speed beat debuff. And they take that experience and apply it to the move. That's how I thought it worked. That's yeah, I'm with the... Aaron on that. Oh, okay. Because uh, we kind of discussed like that being the case, but then changing it to something else when we were talking about move cost refunding. Because technically speaking, all you have to do to refund a move is minus 500 XP. You can't gain XP from it, but you just refunded all the XP that you put into that move. And you've just salvaged 100% of the XP you've put into that move at the cost of, like, basically getting rid of it. Because remember that? You have lost me again. Okay, back when we were discussing on whether or not people should be able to, like, undo their moves to reclaim XP. Uh, originally, like, it was bouncing between yes and no, and then while it was on no, I mentioned... You know, with how XP, like putting a negative on a on a move, like refunds that XP, like you don't have to pay it. You could just jam a move full of every negative you can think of, and they get all the XP back, and now they just have a useless move sitting in their move slots. So then we talked about it not refunding, and then so since it doesn't refund, it wouldn't pay off the cost of the EXP because we changed it to basically just affecting the cost of like the cap hit versus it actually refunding you XP. 
I'm not sure if anybody will actually take negative drawbacks then if it only affects the cap. Well, on the other hand, that means that like if you get to a point where like you could have the move normally, it doesn't cost anything to remove the negatives as well. Because the act, the, the negatives don't have a cost associated with them. Yeah, then it defeats the purpose of the moves or the negatives. Okay. So if okay. So basically you build... it's related to a different issue. Yeah. Okay. So the way I understand it, you build a move that like at character creation, you build a move, your XP cap is thirty. So but you wanna put in fifty XP worth of stuff. So you take twenty XP of negatives. And later on, you want to get rid of those negatives. So you spend the XP to get rid of them. All right. And, but then again, this brings us back to now, are we going to allow people to reclaim move XP for free? Um... I mean, I see it would be something that they have to, like, as far as uh, in-game stuff, they'll need to do, like, training or something, but otherwise, yes. Okay, because we changed it to saying no, they shouldn't, and then changing it to 50%. So we really need, at this point, to lock in. Okay, the 50 They can... I I'm just trying to make it clear, because obviously this matters a lot towards move creation so the 50 xp was or the 50 percent was for weapons but i am good with just saying they get 100 percent back but they need to do something in character you know role play wise up to the storyteller to actually get that refund as far as uh, the XP that they get back, it will only be what they put in. So yeah. if you, well, you only spent yeah. 30 XP on the move, you only get 30 XP back. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, so I obviously this is just something that definitely needed to be ironed out because knowing whether or not we're able to like refund the cost of moves if we decide we don't like them anymore or don't want them or don't need them is obviously integral to how we design the move cost. You know? Yes. But I'm confused oh, on what you're talking about with them, like, getting free XP or something. No, I'm saying... Okay, okay. So I'm saying reclaim the XP from moves, not saying getting free XP from literally nothing. Because even when I was talking about it, I was saying obviously only until, like, you know, uh, obviously not letting them reduce it below zero to gain XP. This was just relating to the fact that, oh, hey, we got the possibility that they could just, you know... What's the word for it? Uh, like, this just lets them reclaim the move XP, which is something that we discussed about the doing or not doing, and then there was, like, you know, a bunch of discussion around it, and it broke things for that reason, so that's why I wanted to iron this out and make sure that it it's all how we want it to be. Okay. So yeah, they just, uh, they get all of the XP that they spent on it back. So even if they have, you know, the, the negatives are basically free XP for the move. Because you're getting those negatives. Alright. So you get a yeah. minus one accuracy for minus five XP... And then you later on get a plus one accuracy, or 
and then you later on decide to refund it, you don't get that free 5 XP back. It is, and it will be an all or nothing kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I know that. I was just pointing out that, like, because before we didn't really have a thing for refunding moves, if we let it be an actual, like, true blue, like, full-on discount, then everyone could just refund their move at any time just by jamming negatives onto it and reclaiming the XP. So I wanted to make it, like, you know, clear on whether or not we just wanted them to be able to refund the moves, and then it wouldn't even be a problem if the, if the negatives, like, you know, put actual true blue discounts on the move it was just me not what i'm just trying to think about the other systems that it would affect and making sure that we're clear on that okay okay this is just one of those things where it's because it was affecting a different system that it would ruin and make really fucky if we just made it this way. So before we made it this way, uh, because we moved it away to doing something else originally to have it not affect the system, I wanted to make sure that we had that squared away, because otherwise we got problems. Okay. So I put, putting a negative effect on a move that would reduce the EXP cost means, I was typing too fast and uh, swapped two letters, means you get a discount on the EXP cost of the move. Purchasing 20 EXP worth of positives and 5 EXP worth of negatives means you only need to spend 15 XP. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Uh... Refunding moves. Moves may be refunded for 100% of the cost that you have spent on it at any time, but you should do some sort of training or effort to narratively make this happen. Is that, does that also sound good? Yes. All right. Uh, so with that squared away, what are we thinking about? the whole minus one plus one either being a dichotomy positive negative or uh negative giving less of a discount than it takes to purchase i think for the sake of i think for the sake of uh Keeping things simple, we'll just have it be the same. So, plus six, minus six. Or six, right, minus dichotomy, six. Got it. Well, it's, it, it was a negative first, so minus six, six. All right. Uh, never miss. Uh, first off, that should be called bypass accuracy. And part of this is cannot... All right, so how do we feel about bypassing accuracy stage at the cost of you also cannot crit? I mean, not being able to crit, I don't feel like that's enough of a penalty for... The guaranteed hit feels really strong to me. Yeah. The, the bypass accuracy. Um, I feel like that should be more expensive. 
I could see that, yeah. Maybe we go with 30? Uh, 50% increase, 30 XP. How much does that... So, with that, we're saying that it's about equal to getting plus 5 accuracy, which plus 5 accuracy is enough for a, uh, another round of attacking. Uh, on a multi-strike. Is that about equal? Actually, that is a very good point as well. Um... That brings up another thing. Okay. Um, because bypassing accuracy, how will that affect multi-attack? Uh, I was saying, I was thinking that it would just sort of work with it. No, because there's no accuracy on that move because it's just guaranteed hit. So I think. Oh yeah. I think so we'll what, what do we do is because you can't... Oh, go ahead. I think we'll have it stay at the 20. However, also part of the notes is that you cannot multi-attack with it. Uh, I could suggest making it a full round action. Period. Well, technically Maybe full another? round actions can still have multi-attack with them. Hmm. Yeah. Um... Also, another thing that I want to bring up is that the way that I thought it worked is since it bypasses the accuracy stage, it doesn't let you put any plus accuracy on it, so you're only going by your, like, natural multi-attack abilities if, it, if you're using bypass accuracy. So you can't do the normal thing of, like, jamming up the accuracy a lot to get a bunch of extra multi-attacks. That's fair. Yeah, we can go with that. So, so multi-attack is still possible. Um, I guess we'll go in the middle we want and make to... it 25. Uh, honestly, I'm fine keeping it 30 because bypassing accuracy, I feel like that should be worth the same as purchasing the equivalent of another round of multi-attack. That's fair. In terms right. of power. Do you guys think that that's about the same amount of, like, power? It feels equivalent. It's a little hard with this one, because never mess is weird. Yeah. Yeah. Bypass accuracy. Um, just bypass accuracy. Jits, we don't... Uh, so the way this system works is that you have an XP cap on moves based on your attributes... So, like, at the very start of the uh, game, you have 30 XP cap. So, if you start out a campaign and you buy a never-miss move, the only power that move is going to have is your natural stats. Yeah. Uh, Follow-up question for this move, then. When you're calculating what your two hit would be in this particular situation, would it just be as if you rolled sevens on all the dice you would have rolled? No. Then how does it mechanically work? Mechanically, it just bypasses the accuracy stage entirely to hit. Gotcha. However, so it's just it hits, period. Yeah, it's just it's just basically like a true strike thing. Gotcha. Uh, for the price right now um, on our proposal of another attack. And what it does is it also means you cannot crit and you cannot increase the accuracy of the move at all to gain additional multi-attacks. Let's make sure to include in there you can't reduce accuracy. The Whatever has yeah. this on there is not going to be able to take negatives like or the yeah. build XP like that. So I'm just going to put cannot change accuracy. Yeah, it was a, it was a part of our part of the already existing restriction of it was that uh, you have to be at full accuracy in order to put it on there. It's better to have it written though. Yeah, uh, cannot change the accuracy of the move at all. Uh, accuracy must be zero. To apply. To purchase this effect.
That way you can't make the move, have accuracy, then put bypass accuracy on it and go, oh, well, I didn't change it once I put it on. It was already like that. So accuracy must be zero to purchase this effect. Um, I think adding on an extra effect, having it be based on the effect, like the first 10% have it be on that effect, I think that that's fine. Or do you want to, like, have a surcharge of 5, five XP? Or 3 XP or whatever. Um. Well, first off, let's clarify what is actually being added with an extra effect. Yeah. So my idea of extra effects were things like... Um, is it only conditions uh, like, or also the... Um, the stat changes. Uh, obviously conditions. Uh, do we want to include stat changes with that? Mm. I'm leaning no. Because debuffs are kind of a different animal. Yeah, that's what I... Buffs and debuffs are kind of like a different thing, so... I'm fine if we leave it out and we just go add a condition. I'm thinking we just snap this. Um, instead of having... And instead we can add the extra cost to the conditions. If we want to have an extra cost. Because having that two-stage thing was definitely very confusing for people. Yeah, okay. So, for add an extra effect, we're going to snap it and instead have it be, like, purchasing 10%, like, you know, down here, is going to be the actual thing, and it's going to be per condition. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, that feels better and a lot more clear. And then... I will highlight all this, I'll shift five, and fill it red. I like how it tried to do a uh, strike through on a dash. Yeah, it, that, that that's what it does. <coughs> or to the music. So do we want to include, uh, this is just gonna be conditions, right? Uh, yeah. Condition. Actually, Considering there are some moves where there is a chance of applying a stat change. Yeah, sure. So we'll just have it be, uh, yeah, extra effects. Now, one thing that I do want to point out is that this is going to be something that we're going to have to be very careful for to not make certain extra effects like uh, like stat increases be prohibitively expensive to throw on moves. Yes. So we're going to have to be careful with this one. This is one where we're going to have to be very careful. Um, I say that for, uh, at least for this, extra effects include... That changes and conditions. Just so we have a note saying that extra effects means stat changes and conditions. Uh, and cost is based on which extra effect is being applied. Be right back again. All right. That uh, that good for you? No, I I say let's add in a new one. Let's go ahead and split these up. Um cost of 3 per 10% for conditions and cost of or no, sorry. Cost of 5 for conditions. 
um, per 10%, and then cost of 3 per 10% for stat changes. Okay, so conditions... Oh, wait, hold up. No, this, this is going to be the new thing. And I'll do this to show that it's being split. So, uh, extra effects. The top one, let's make conditions. Or condition. Good night, Beerus. Stat change. Cost per stat change. All right, so how much do we want for conditions? It was three. Uh, conditions would be five. Stat changes five. are three. Okay. Because stat changes aren't as impactful as conditions. Fair. All right. And then uh, are we going to put this does not include the surcharge for which vert, which condition? What do you mean? Well, because normally what we have is a surcharge based on the condition. Like, you know, some conditions are worth 15, others are worth 5. That is not included in the 10% chance increase, Correct. like, for conditions. So, do we want to say this price is not included for the surcharge? Correct. And I think for the purchase of an effect, it'll include 10% for free. Yeah, which it already does, but we'll just note that. Yeah. This price not for the... Surcharge attached to specific to added first perch. Sorry, I'm still BRB, but I had to come back to say it is. What? <laughs> I've been doing the math wrong. Oh, yeah, no, it is. It says it in the notes and everything. By default, extra effects start at 10% chance. Bah. Yeah, some of that stuff was confusing, which is why we're trying to yeah, no, clarify. The, yeah. <laughs> I've got First to purchase so includes a free ten percent chance, and then I'll just copy and paste it. All right, uh, guaranteed extra effects with damage. I say snap. I. Uh... I say you should have to pay up to get to 100% instead of just pay 30. I don't see a reason for this to exist. I agree. Uh, I'd say we snap both of those. Yep. Well, actually... Uh, I'm I think actually guaranteed extra effects without damage. I think we could work with that. Yeah. The extra effects without damage could be useful for a, uh, you know, give a discount if all the move is doing is just uh, the extra effects. Yeah, and then we'll put this move cannot deal damage uh should we say like outside of condition damage because um there are conditions that deal damage i would say that i would say it doesn't necessarily need to be included the move itself cannot cause damage yeah the the move itself cannot deal damage this move itself cannot deal damage all right because basically you're paying off part of the percent chance for a condition like you know in order to not have to but it, like you're paying off like half the price to never be able to deal damage with it okay uh follow-up question for that yep Say you made a move that initially does no damage unless you get the status effect off. 
Okay, so if you have something where it's a restriction like that, that is something to talk with your storyteller, mostly. But, uh, like, let's say you have a move that only deals damage. If there is a status effect, then that is conditional on the status effect being there. And so you wouldn't want to purchase guaranteed extra effects without damage, because then you're saying the move itself cannot deal damage. Okay, that was the clarification I was looking for. Cool. Yeah. So that is that would be a different restriction. That would not be this. Uh, uncontrollable overpower cap. Um. Uh, the reason. Real quick. Oh, go ahead. I think we should split up the guaranteed extra effects into stat and condition as well. Different cost right. for each. And. In that case, I will go ahead and insert one row above. Combine, combine. Condition without damage. That change. All right, so, so we're split up costs. 100% for stat change, because they get 10% for free. Um, yeah. For stat change, that would be 27. So I would say drop. Guaranteed stat change to 18. Alright. Make it a, you know, decent discount. And then um, this, you want to move it up to like 22, like 23? Well, again, threes or fives. Uh, so I would well, say... Well, yeah, but it'd be... It would be like, you know, putting together, like just adding a three onto uh, like four or fives. Or we could just well, do like I, I, I do So know. when I do, when I'm saying threes or fives, I am meaning strictly it's either a multiple of three or a multiple of five. Oh, okay. So not mix and match. Okay. So, yeah. In that case, uh, normally it's like 45. So... Do I'm we saying... want... It's 45 for conditions, because it's 9 times 5. <sighs> 35 feels a little too much. Yeah, let's... let's We could make it... Uh, 25, 28? Mm. To, like, have it. Because... The thing is, is 9 times 3, I mean... We're not quite having it already. I don't so... want to have it, definitely. Uh, I wanted a little bit more than half. Uh, we're times it by two-thirds on the other one. So 45 times uh, two divided by three would be 30. 30 sounds good. 30 is the exact mathematical, mathematical equivalent to what we did with guaranteed stat change. Perfect. Let's ship it. All right. Uncontrollable. This was only here for the um, uh, for the bypass accuracy. So that way, if it that that was why that was there. We just want to snap it as a. I think we should snap it as a part of the move creation. And instead, it's just based on the move. I don't think we need this anymore. I thought uncontrollable was for going over the power cap. It was, but the reason why it was in move costs is because there was a thing on bypass on never miss, which said uh, this cannot be applied to moves where another effect sets the accuracy to an amount such as Oko. Accuracy must be at 100% for it to be applicable. This is to stop you from putting a bunch of stuff on a, like a bunch of overpower cap stuff on never miss and just uh, on like on it buying back some of the accuracy and then putting never miss on it with an overpower cap move. 
since we won't have that wording on bypass accuracy quite, we I don't know if we need uncontrollable anymore. That's fair. Snap it. It like it, it'll be it'll be somewhere else. I don't think we need it in effects, to put it clear. We don't need yep. it in a move cost. Alright. Uh range and reach. I know that you had a had an idea for this, so. I did? Yeah, you mentioned wanting to change it to like range of like close, medium, long, extreme. Oh that. Uh Era, are you back? Because that's something that I... Oh, crap. It's time for session. But... Enja's not here yet. Uh, Sorry, I could hear, but I couldn't talk. I, I was getting my snake's food ready. No worries. Got, got to feed the noodles. So, I've been kind of thinking about switching to something similar to what Pathfinder does for ranges instead because uh, a lot of at least third party stuff that I've seen, I don't know about base Pathfinder but a lot of the time they go with short, medium, long, or far, or whatever terms they use it, for it was extreme, but yeah. extreme um, for range bands and it's based on your level and such and I kind of like that idea uh yes please um ranged right now is yeah that is okay An another thing that we could do is we could also steal something from pathfinder which is an accuracy malice for every band past your range band you're going so you could use moves past their range and treat it more as like this is your max effective range before it starts like getting negatives. I would approve of that myself. I do like the idea of making a move short range, buying into medium range, buying into long range. And I don't think you should be able to buy into extreme range. I feel like that's something that you need a feed for. Yeah. That should be probably a storytelling thing. But so what do we want to make buying range bands if we're going to do range bands we need to know what the range bands are going to be first yes yeah which is why uh, i'm saying like asking what we want to make it yeah my recommendation would be 10 feet for a short range this is your classic throw and weapon range uh going up to about 50 feet which is your classic short bow range and then going up to 100 feet for your long bow that's a lot of range, and you almost never use it, but boy, when you do, <laughs> feels good. Well, I know uh, for Pathfinder, from what I have seen, um, it is, like, the short range is based on your level. Your total, the total range that you have is based on your level. Oh, you're talking about the spell variant, not uh, melee weapons, then. Yeah, uh, so for spell okay. variants, it goes 25 plus 5 per two caster levels, for short. E yes, for that's day. that's what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but another thing is that, first of all, longbows can shoot up to 1,000 feet. Uh, forty, Like, 450 on the low end. Uh, but is it? I don't remember. I, it's yeah. been forever since I had a player take a longbow. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm talking about real life. Sorry, I, I wasn't even... Oh, in real life, yes. There, there. There's a yeah. significant difference between the 75-pound freaking British longbow I got in my hallway and, you know, Pathfinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but on the second thing, uh, also, our basic starter range right now for things is 20 feet. Like, if you want a range to move, like, a like what equates to, like, a water gun. If you want to remake water gun, it's a four-power move with 20 feet of range, and that's your 30 XP spent. So, if nothing else, I think our basic close range should probably be something like 10 XP, you get 20 feet of range. And then, like, we could have that scale with, like, maybe a plus 5 or plus 10 per 5 attributes or something. I don't know. I like that.
And then, so we could go 20. What would be a good medium? We could always go 20, 40, 80. We could go 20, 50, 100. Let's and then start it, like, it. it scales from there. Let's do 20, 40, 80 to start off with. That's the easiest math to go with. We can make it the range increments go up for short range less than medium, medium a little bit more than high a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, so do we want to have different costs for buying medium and then long? Or do we want to go like uh, per range band? So it per range band? So like 10 XP per range band? So if you I want the thinking... long range, you gotta put 30 XP. I was thinking it would be uh, maybe uh, 10, well, I guess you would have to buy each range band. Yeah, yeah. so if you want to make it 10, 20, 30, it'd be 60 XP to have long range. That is a bit much. So it'd be, for example, it'd be 30 XP going against your move cap, so like an entire five attribute level. Like, cause that's what, what we can think of as it adds 30 XP towards your cap. An entire attribute, like, bracket goes towards making it long range. What is that worth to us? And if we make it 10, 20, 30, it's two attribute brackets worth of XP goes towards it. We could do we like 10, 12, 15. Uh, if we're going to do that, maybe like 10, 15, 20? Because if it's 10, 15, 20... That feels too expensive, though. That's, that's 45 XP. That is an attribute level and a half. But this also means that if it's 10, 15, 20, you could have a like, if it's 10, 15, 20, at a basic level of, like, you know, starting, starting character, you could have a full round action move that has three power and has long range. I, th I might actually be okay with that. Uh, for example, for like someone that like at our current DRS level, or like I think all of the Pokemon games are currently in the 10 to 15 bracket, you can have a normal move that you can use every single round that has long range and three power to it. I think that feels good, personally. I don't know what Zim thinks. I'm... Do you need a pen in it? Let me see it written out. Sometimes it helps to... Because right now I just got a bunch yep. of numbers running around in my head and... Yep, that's what I'm doing right here. 15... Oops. So this right here is what we're doing. Five foot, uh, five, right, like 10 feet of range costing five XP is going to buying short range band being 10 XP, buying medium being 15 on top of the 10 and buying long is uh, 20 XP on top of medium and then on top of short. This is a total price of 45 XP in order to get long range. However, only getting short range is only a buy-in of 10. How much is... Okay, so part of this is we need to figure out exactly what we're doing for those range bands. Yeah, and so the current proposal is 20, 40, 80, and then uh, short scales slower, medium scales normally, and long scales faster. So, uh, but In the, the notes, base... could you put your proposal on that? Yeah. 
for the range bands. Range plus five uh, plus. Five attributes forty foot. That works. Range plus Eighty, and then probably plus thirty or forty, something like that. Okay, yeah, thirty or forty, something like that. Yeah. So, for example, if you're a ten XP character or ten attribute character, and you buy long range, that would be a grand total of eighty plus sixty, one hundred and forty feet range. However, if you only have short range, uh, maybe we should put this down to five. Yeah, 10, you, 4, 5, 10, 15, or do you think, yeah. Or 5, 10, tw maybe 20, 20, because it's four times as expensive. Yeah, that sounds right. That would fit the curve, yes. Yeah, that fits better. So, like, a starting character buying short range on a move would have 25-foot range. And then by the time they get to 10 feet, or 10, it's, uh, tw it's yeah. 30 feet. But by the time they get to 15, it's only 35. And if they're at 20, it's only short range. It's only like, you know, uh, like a 40 foot move. However, it scales a lot better, like the more range you purchase. So end game, if you've got a long range on it, it's a fucking like ICBM. You've you've got a sniper rifle. Yeah. Uh, so like end game, if it's eighty plus, uh, let's just let's just assume like a forty attribute character. So a forty attribute character has eight. So forty times eight. Uh, that is four hundred feet of range. And uh, let, let's assume that you just have, like, the maximum cap. Like, let's say you're a level f attribute 50 character, all of it's maxed. Your long-range uh, moves have a range of 480 feet. Okay. Well, Taldarius, you're the numbers guy. How does that feel to you? Uh, So that means that if you're a max level character, you could shoot you, you could use a move at about the same range as the low end of a real-life longbow. With, like, a 150-pound draw weight. But that's, like, uh, end level, uh, when we're talking about, like, for example, like, you know, short range, it's only... Uh... It's five. So you'd only have a range of 70, even if you're max level with a short range move. Which is still less than a starting long range move. Okay. How do those numbers feel to you? Um, Looking at it, uh, the start is 25, like at the start of the game... 25, 50, 100. Those numbers sound good to me. That's game start, 25, 50, 100. All right, then let's ship it. All right, uh, reach. Uh, do we want reach to be the same? I like reach staying the same, but I'm feeling like maybe making it a, uh, maybe max of 30 feet. Okay, so max 25 feet added then, because it would automatically have 5 foot, like, reach normally. Because that's, like, how far away you can melee attack. So if you buy yeah. one thing of one thing of reach, you're at 10. So you should have... Okay. Uh, 
let's of. let's make it a bit clearer max reach of 30 i kind of uh, like so we can have people portal. like douse what was that era could you use say total max reach of 30 feet uh i'll say max total okay thank you i kind of like that like it doesn't make that much sense for a, a you know your arm extends that far, but <laughs> I. Have you ever heard of a thrust? Yeah, I, I'm yeah. thinking this First is all, going. Thrust. Second of all, like just have people douse them each other, you know. I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, uh, Street Fighter, the really long range monk guy that like has like extendo arms and can yeah. hit you like across the screen with a punch. <laughs> Uh, so one thing we do have to be careful of is that we do also intend to eventually make it so you can pick up a feat to opportunity attack people with your reach moves. So if we have a max total reach of 30 feet, you could have people fucking, you know, area of divination each other. Yes. Um, I am thinking that with that, uh, you'll be able to have beyond the 10 feet. It'll be something where you actually are moving, though. We might want to subdivide that then. Yeah. But I'm fine with it being this. It's just something that we're going to have to put in a note. And well, it might be about time to stick a pin in it. Yeah, yeah there, it there's is. A... Uh, we were just getting to the end of the section. Yeah. There is a note section. Also, so I know that Digi is getting that. ready. Yes. Yeah. Uh, also, I know that Digi just connect because I just saw my, my connection go out. Because I connected uh -huh. it earlier to get something. So Digi is down there and he has just connected to the server. Nice. All right. So what do we want to put for the note on this? Uh, you can move uh, or basically 10 feet is the max actual range, but you can move to like up to that 30 will be uh, beyond 10 feet away. You have to actually physically move, but it is allowed as part of the reach. Basically, like, if it's within 30 feet and you have that much reach, you can take a free 20-foot move action. Exactly, yeah. Okay, 10 foot is the maximum actual reach of a move, but if the target is outside of that reach, but within reach of the move, you may make a free movement maneuver. User to reach that target foot of the opponent. Uh, without a feat, you may not. You, uh, A, A, O, O, outside of 10 feet. How's that sound? That sounds solid. Yeah, looks good. All right. So, uh, looks good to me. I think that this is a good start. We got through one section. No problem. Uh, and I think this will be a really nice basis for us going forward. Yeah, everything looks good to me. Cool. Uh, and then when we're done with this, what we can do is we can toss it out to the community, ask for feedback on it, and uh, see if we fucked anything majorly up or accidentally ruined someone's build. Because before we make it final... This is just a proposal, and they don't have to try and swap over their characters to this shit. Yes. So, this is proposed, and we will make sure we aren't accidentally taking someone out back and old yellowing their build. Yeah, it all looks good. 
All right, well, thank you everybody for joining us today for this DevTales stream as well as Art Martin stream. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Mastodon, Blue Sky, Patreon, and more. They're on the website as well as down in the description below through <laughs> our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. You guys keep this channel alive. You keep this going. I can't do this without you guys. Whether you are supporting financially or just with your time, consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by using our Humble Bundle Partner link or by bringing your friends in, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube to help out. But for now, thank you all so much for joining, and I bid you the most fondest, a duke. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.